present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello. Hello and welcome to I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. You join us today in Greenwich, the London borough with a rich history and centuries of royal association. Henry V landed here after the Battle of Agincourt in 1415 when the vastly superior French horsemen were comprehensively routed by our English archers. But then ten minutes of Marjorie Antrobus is enough to terrify anyone. <laughs> Elizabeth I came here in 1580 to knight Francis Drake in reward for his round-the-world voyage. Townsfolk flocked to witness the sight of good Queen Bess taking up a large sword to perform his circumnavigation ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> As a result of a slight misunderstanding, the words, Arise, Sir Francis, were entirely wasted on him. In the 17th century, architect Christopher Wren did much to set the style of Greenwich when his colonnaded neo-Renaissance Royal Naval College was commissioned. However, this was only after his original design of a huge upside-down Tupperware bowl held up by string attached to big sticks was rejected on the grounds the town wanted something visitors might bother to come and see. <laughs> But since that time, Greenwich has developed a knack of getting people to come here to take a look at the most unlikely curiosities. Let's meet the team. <laughs> on my left, Barry Crow and Graham Garden. And on my right, on my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Andy Hamilton. And taking up her scoring position on the desk next to me, please welcome the delightful Samantha. <laughs> Okay, on with the first game, teams, which is all about cutting costs. It's called Cost Cutters. So I'd like suggestions, please, of low-budget versions of TV and radio programmes that might please the cost-conscious broadcaster. Will you start, please? Barry. Who wants to be a milliner? <laughs> Walking with Dinah Shaw. <laughs> the Jerry Springer Spaniel. <laughs> um, the antiques fell off the back of a lorry and into the road show. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Jason and the Argos catalogue. <laughs> Friday night is muesli night. <laughs> there's, um, there's a new latest sort of epic travelogue in which a BBC celebrity goes absolutely nowhere, completely boxed in by traffic, no progress at all. That's Michael Palin's Hemmed In Way adventure. <laughs> Living with the enema. <laughs> what about Ned Sherin's loose end? Or is, that... <laughs> is that... That's more of a rumour than a programme, though. Isn't it? <laughs> Channel 5. <laughs> okay, it's time now for the teams to sing for us oh. in a round called One Song to the Tune of Another. Using the description of a game as its title is still quite a common practice abroad. In Italy, their name for Grand Prix motor racing means drive like you do anyway. <laughs> in Finland, cross-country skiing translates as, what else do you expect us to do, surfing? <laughs> and in Samoa, they... And in Samoa, their word rugby football literally translates as fat blokes get muddy and punch each other's lights out. <laughs> Meanwhile, all over Britain, the expression Colin Sell provides piano accompaniment is interpreted as who's that banging away in the back? <laughs> okay, Graham, will you start by singing the Beach Boys' Barbara Ann to the tune of the theme from Swan Lake? <laughs> Brian. Oh, Barbara and 
take my hand. Ba 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 Brandon. Ba 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 You got me rocking and rolling, rocking and reeling, ba ba. Tim, Tim, now will you please sing the words of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees to the tune of the Toreador song from Carmen? <laughs> well, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Feel the city breaking and everybody shaking. And we're staying alive, staying alive. Ha 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 ha, staying alive, staying alive. Ha 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 ha, staying alive. Okay. Okay, Andy, I'd like you to sing the words of Light My Fire by The Doors to the tune of The Red Flag. <laughs> you know that it would, would be untrue You know that I would be a liar If, if I was to say to you Girl, we couldn't get much higher Come on, baby, light my fire Come on, baby, light my fire Try to set the night on fire The time to hesitate is through And finally, Barry, would you please sing the words of Postman Pat to the tune of the Habanera from Bizet's Carmen? <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. So oh, the birds are singing, the day is just beginning, and feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. Oh, his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe he, you can never be sure. There'll be knock, knock, knee, ring, ring, letters through your door. Yeah, that's, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> Now, I know what the audience must be thinking. Why aren't there more games combining the exact science of animal care with the skill of ventriloquism? <laughs> well, worry no more. Worry no more, as the teams will now fill this glaring gap in the market with a great new game called Vents in Practice. <laughs> obviously, obviously, in this age of political correctness, the unlimited fun afforded by the teams using live animals in ventriloquist acts is considered an undignified spectacle. So we won't be able to enjoy Tim Brooke Taylor and Charlie the Chimpanzee doing their tribute to Peter Bruff and Archie Andrews. <laughs> Besides, Tim kept falling off the chimp's knee. <laughs> His big hairy hand was a bit rough as well. Which definitely upset the chimp. In this revised version, each player will perform a piece of popular dialogue by using his team partner as the dummy. Barry and Graham, would you like to start, please? Your piece is a famous scene from Brief Encounter. Barry, you're the dummy playing Trevor Howard. Graham, you're Celia Johnson. Oh, please, could you give me a glass of water? I've got something in my eye and I want to bathe it. Can I help you? <laughs> oh, no, please. It's only something in my eye. Please let me look. I happen to be a doctor. That's very kind of you. 
look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> Turn round to the light, please. Now look up. <laughs> now look down, keep still. I see it. Oh. There. Oh, what a relief. It, it was agonizing listening to that. <laughs> Looks like a git of grit. <laughs> a git of grit? It was when the express went through. Thank you very much indeed. How lucky you happen to be here. Any goddy could have done it. <laughs> Never mind, you did, and I'm most grateful. There's my train. I must go. Good guy. Good. Good guy. <laughs> That's how it all began. Just from me getting a little git of grit in my eye. <laughs> I completely forgot the whole incident. It didn't mean anything to me at all. I just went to the guffet and had a gottle of gear. <laughs> okay, your turn now, Tim. Your turn now, uh, Tim and Andy. I'd like you to perform a scene from The Importance of Being Earnest. And Andy, you're the dummy in this one, playing Jack Worthing. Tim, you can be Lady Bracknell. Off you go. <clears throat> Where did the charitable gentleman who had a ticket for the seaside resort find you? In a handbag. Uh, handbag. <laughs> yes, Lady Glackle. I was in a handbag, a somewhat large Glack Glegler handbag. With candles on it. An ordinary handbag, in fact. I shall now attempt to light a cigarette and drink <laughs> a pint of beer at the same time. In what locality did this, Mr. God, you come across this ordinary handbag? Which one's the doll? <laughs> In the glug room oh. at Victoria Station. A oh, glug room at Victoria Station. <laughs> I think you'll have to go back in the hangar. <laughs> I, I don't want to go in the hangar. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Okay, well, uh, as we're in Greenwich today, we thought we'd try a brand new puzzle game tailored to suit this historic setting. It's called Try Parking Your Car Here on a Sunday. <laughs> obviously, obviously that proved almost impossible, though we did eventually stumble across a handy parking space by the station. <laughs> in Maidstone. <laughs> so instead, we're going to play a game all about time. Time is a strange, abstract concept, which, it was assumed, always travelled at a uniform rate, until Albert Einstein discovered that time actually slows down markedly when you fly into space or listen to the moral maze. <laughs> the game is based on the old favourite, What's the Time, Mr. Wolf? A simple and entertaining pleasure in which young children are threatened with being eaten by a large predatory canine wearing a wristwatch. <laughs> Ours is a dumbed-up version of the game called What is Time, Mr. Wolf? In which the teams will ask questions on the very nature of time itself. The wolf in our game is none other than the eminent professor of bioengineering, Heinz Wolf. So please welcome Professor Wolf. Now, Professor, uh, may I call you Hans? Everybody else does. Okay. Oh, well, then I won't, then, in that case. <laughs> I'd like you, please, now, to turn and face the wall here while the teams make their way to the other side of the room. <laughs> their job is to creep up on you, asking questions about the nature of time as they go. <laughs> Your job is to catch and eat them. Is that clear? It's been a long time since lunch. Well, I'm glad of that. Okay, off you go, teams. Uh, what time was a hit for Rolf Harris, Professor Wolf? Timey kangaroo dance sport. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the Australian, really. <laughs> Not sure you can do the German. That's <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> for slip tune. <laughs> Professor Wolf, was it Christopher Isherwood who said, we live in stirring times? 
No, that was Delia Smith. <laughs> At what time of the clock is it advisable to rock, Professor Wolf? Well, at four hourly intervals. After one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock would be a good time to rock. <laughs> <laughs> then wait past five, six, seven o'clock, <laughs> until eight o'clock to rock. Then another pause on the rocking schedule. Past nine, ten, eleven o'clock, until rocking can begin again at midnight. <laughs> What was the Times compilation that featured famous highs and lows in the life of the popular broadsheet, Professor Wolfe? It was the best of times, the worst of times. <laughs> Can you complete the following list, Professor Wolfe? Breakfast, sage, lunch, rosemary. Dinner time. <laughs> Professor Wolfe. Oh, I imagine we'll go back to bioengineering with a sense of relief. <laughs> we move on now with a round called Where Am I? Sorry, that was just a flashback. I was miles away. <laughs> but by a fantastic coincidence, I noticed this round is actually called Where Am I? <laughs> In this round, I'd like each team magically to transport me to a mystery location by the use of mere sound effects alone. And when I say sound effects, I don't mean those new sound recordings so popular today. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Each of the sounds the teams produce should be created the old-fashioned way, either manually or orally, with the aid of selected items from the BBC Radio sound effects cupboard. To heighten the experience for myself, I've asked Samantha to tie something tightly around a prominent part of my body. <laughs> my head. <laughs> it's this blindfold. I shall attempt to describe where I am by carefully listening to the sounds the teams produce. And if I'm right, they'll score points. Okay, we'll start with you, Graham and Barry. If you'd like to begin painting your sound landscape, I shall tell you where I think I am. Off you go. Samantha, blindfold on now, please. Spectacles off. Steady, Sam. Okay, carry on then. Wind. I'm outside the euthanasia curry house <laughs> in Blissett Street. No, I'm not. I'm in the driving seat of a pony cart. Which is racing a train. <laughs> now, where would that be? There's a sheep there. A sheep and an owl. Good God. Really. No. Ah! I was right. I'm outside the euthanasia curry house. Well, Graham and Mary, tell me, tell me where I am. Tell me where I am, because I'm lost. Chicago. I see. Yes, yes. Why? <laughs> the Windy City. Windy. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, that was the good. good. Ah, yes, good, yes. Yeah. Your turn now, Tim and Andy. Will you start uh, creating your sound location for me, please? All right. right. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Train. <laughs> that, well, I'm in Spain, so. Well, it's let's go and eat. <laughs> <laughs> now I have no idea. We're where obviously I'm. on a tube. Yeah, and, and that's the sound of a, a man with a mobile with a particularly annoying ring. <laughs> <laughs> they say you should always quit while you're ahead, so let's carry on with the next round, which I see is... <laughs> which I see is called Stars in Their Ears. This was adapted to suit the teams from TV's Stars in Their Eyes, where ordinary people of limited talent pretend to be famous celebrities. Not quite sure why it had to be adapted. <laughs> <laughs> the teams will each sing a song in the style of a fabulous showbiz talent, while Colin Sell will play the piano in the corner. 
Actually, when music experts hear Collins' compositions, they often say he could have been another Berlin porter or anybody else employed by the German State Railway. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, we're going to start with you. Your song is A, You're Adorable. Who will you be singing it as? Uh, tonight, Humph. <laughs> I will go into the dry ice and re-emerge as Murray Walker. B, your Mika Hacken in C, your Eddie Irvine in a spin. D, your Damon Hill, E, your an Espadrille, and F, it's a Ferrari. No, it's a McLaren. G, you look good. Keep up, Colin. G, you look good to me. H, your Hill. No, cool child. I, you're the one I idolise. J, we are like Jack and Jill. No, it's Jill followed by Jack. <laughs> hey, you're so miserable. Who was that? Hell is the love light in your eyes. Over to Martin. <laughs> Graham, Graham, your song is My Favourite Things from The Sound of Music. Who will you be singing it as, please? Uh, tonight, Humphrey shall be Darth Vader. <laughs> Raindrops on roses, and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages wrapped up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream-colored ponies, crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells, and guards seize them. Wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite targets. And finally, Andy, your song is Old Man River. Who have you chosen to impersonate for this one? Sooty. What's that, Sooty? <laughs> Old Man River. He must know something. He doesn't say nothing. That's nice. He just keeps rolling. He, ju he just keeps on... He just keeps on rolling along, ladies and gentlemen. That's what, that's what Sooty's telling me. What's that? He don't plant taters. And is soon forgotten. But Old Man River, he... I've soon forgotten. Now, have you been drinking again? <laughs> Just keeps rolling along. Yes. Isn't that nice? <laughs> What's that? You and me, we sweat and strain. Body all aching and racked with pain. Let's bring in sweet, shall we, Sooty? <laughs> oh, sweet. Do you want to do a solo sweep? Okay, away you go. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, sweet. Isn't that nice, Sooty? All together now. What do you mean? What do you mean you don't think sweet should do any more, Sooty? Now, now, Sooty, don't be naughty. Don't be naughty, Sooty. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> For those of you listening at home, you're happy and not knowing. <laughs> Well, I notice it's almost the end of the show, but before we go, there's just time for teams to announce the late arrivals at the Frenchman's Ball. <laughs> Samantha tells us she's off to a gourmet evening where her favourite French chef has prepared a nine-course dinner. Looking at the menu, she says she's not so keen on some of his traditional dishes, but she spotted something tempting between the frog's legs. <laughs> and the boeuf en croute, which also looks nice. Who wants to start? Tim. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Alouetta and the son, John T. Alouetta. Welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. Fembargo. <laughs> uh, 
and their cousin, British Beef Embargo. From the French farming community... Oh, yes? Madame leads into the cattle trough, and Monsieur leads into the cattle trough. Ah, welcome uh, Jacques Delors and his mother, Mère Delors. <laughs> what did Ma say? <laughs> She's bored. Oh. No. Will you welcome, please, Mr. and Mrs. That Hole in the Ground Can't Be a Toilet. And their daughter, Shirley, That Hole in the Ground... <laughs> Will you welcome, please, welcome. Monsieur and Madame, the other one, <laughs> and their cynical son, Paul, the other one. <laughs> Will you please welcome Mr. Sayez and his llama? That's the llama, Sayez. <laughs> Will you welcome, please, uh, Monsieur and Madame, is the sound of a racing car? <laughs> and their son, Pierre, <laughs> is the sound of a racing car. Ah, who is that hesitating in the doorway? Oh, it is Mr. and Mrs. Cordial's aunt from France. Come on, Tante Cordial. <laughs> Oh, no! Someone has switched round the signs and said, ladies and gents, what a Toulouse low trick! <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen. Really welcome, please. <laughs> Still Mr. Is, is all right for a holiday, but you wouldn't want to live there, and their son, Francis. <laughs> oh! Well... Well, ladies and gentlemen, as the wee willy winky of time pops out of the nightgown of eternity, <laughs> I notice it's the end of the show. So from Samantha, the teams, myself and the fine folk of Greenwich, it's goodbye. Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor, Barry Cryer and Andy Hamilton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, Colin Searle setting some of them to music. The programme consultant was Ian Pattinson, and the producer was John Naismith.